Good morning, YouTube. Yes. I have to say kind of quietly because I have two kittens. You look like you're about to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't like that. <laughs> no, no, they did not like that. Uh, earlier, our ploy to save uh, Jeep with their failing Grand Wagoneer sales was to uh, include a kitten with right. every purchase of, <laughs> of a new vehicle. But, uh, you know, actually the Grand Wagoneer isn't on the list of worst selling cars so far in 2024. Oh, there's something worse selling. Way worse. Okay. Yeah. They sold 467 in 45 days. Okay. Uh, there's some of these on this list. They haven't even sold that much so far this year. So we're halfway into the year. What? And uh, there, there's some that are way, way lower. So these are pretty much cars that might be on the chopping block as not coming back in the future? Yeah, one of two things. Either they're yeah really new, so they haven't made that many sales yet because they just don't have inventory yet. Right. Or, yeah, cars that just nobody wants. Right. So uh, the first one on the list, the Volvo C40 Recharge. Hmm. So only a thousand of them sold. This is the only one that's over a thousand on this list so far this year. Right. So a electric Volvo. Right. Okay. Nobody wants it. Everybody wants a Tesla Model Y. Volvo's entry into the foray is an abysmal failure. Well, and the thing like, you know, I'm not completely versed on electric cars, but that's one that I just don't hear a lot about. They don't put mm -mm. money into marketing. They're not really pushing it out there. So that could possibly be why. Um, that, that may be good for Volvo. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, their dealership network is very small. And, yeah, their marketing is even smaller. Like I, I can't think of the last time I saw a Volvo commercial. Maybe it'll play right now. And, and <laughs> good morning, YouTube. <laughs> right. But it doesn't seem like they really care all that much anymore. And basically, it's just a hardcore fan base of Volvo people. Which there that, is. Yeah, yeah, that are just going to buy it no matter what. And mm -hmm. they're just like, well, well, no reason to spend any extra money. They'll just keep coming back. So right. yeah, the Volvo. Or C40. maybe we don't like the symbol because it's a male symbol. I know it's supposed to be like the old school symbol oh, you, for iron or whatever. You got corrected <laughs> last time you brought that up. But yes, the next one, once again, you compete with the Model Y, Tesla, yeah. you lose. Chevy Equinox EV. Ooh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know who's buying it, only a thousand. I, I was wrong, this one they sold a little over a thousand of them right. as well. So this is another, I think these are the only two that are over a thousand as the next one sold over a thousand. But anyway, yeah. you know what I mean? I, and of course they have the new EVs with the Lyric mm -hmm. and its competitor on the Blazer EV. Right. So you have an Equinox and a Blazer. So that, that's a lot already to have two Chevy SUVs that are already pretty similar. Right. Uh, competing against each other. Well, I feel like there might be a correction soon. I don't know if I can call it that, but all electric SUVs and cars are a mm -hmm. little overpriced and they're all kind of backing down, coming down. Sales aren't doing that well. And so this might be one of them that needs to have the price lowered. Right. They're all a little more expensive than the Model Y or mm -hmm. just right at it. And I think that's, that's the best card right now as far as tech and everything else. We'll see if that changes. Next one, though, we're going to the old school. Nobody's buying coupes anymore. Two-door right. coupes, even though they're the prettiest cars, but this is not practical. Mm, they're not. So, yeah, the Lexus LC, very, very low. Uh, almost $100,000, I think, the base price on these. Uh, they sold 966 of them so far this year. I can't get with that front grill and the design of it. And I, I know it's supposed to be cool and innovative and a little different, but I just, you look at it head on, and that's the first thing you see, and I'm just kind of like, hmm. Not my style. But this is one of the last V8 two-door coupes right. out there. Okay. And it is an excellent car. Should we have Just a moment? amazing uh, car. To think about the last of these internal combustion cars. Coupes. Well, as far as, yeah, cars, coupes, the S-Class, mm -hmm. you know, the 7 Series will still be around forever, but will the V8s go away? Mm -hmm. and the, the coupe version is already going away. I can't imagine them continuing to build these LCs with the sales numbers of them, even though they are the best of both worlds. The performance is amazing, but they're also so luxurious, comfortable. It is, it is a Supra. I feel like right. versus the you know BMW Supra. This is much more of that in my eyes, even though it's like a you know, luxurious it's a, it's a Supra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next, Lexus RC once Ooh, again. Lexus on the list again. Is there anybody else, maybe other than Mercedes and BMW, that is offering multiple coupes anymore? Like this, mm -mm. Lexus, Mercedes, BMW. This, this is it. Right. Nobody else. Well, Aston Martin, I suppose, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Aston Martin's had like six coupes at once at one time. So now, <laughs> you know, them being down to whatever they have is, is less. So, yeah, right. they didn't have any SUVs, any four doors, anything. Mm -hmm. They just had coupes all through their lineup right. and had Virage and DB9s and Vanquish. And it was like a fanage. It didn't make any sense. So, yeah, another one 10 uh, year old car. So, really long in the tooth. Right. 941 sold. 
Whew. so far this year. That's tough. A it's, little bit cheaper, this, obviously. That's a, a long time, though. It's not just a couple of months. It's like, what, we're at six months now. All year. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have the BMW Z4. Okay. Fun sports car. Right. Um, once again, I read this before and it all went out of my head. Um, they've sold 1,495. So there's another one that's over 1,000. Boy, <laughs> really knocking it out of the park with your prep there, Tyler. I, I swear <laughs> I, I went through this multiple times and I thought the number was getting lower, but apparently, uh, yeah. We started not, with low and we're but creeping it's, up. It's jumping around. No, because it gets lower. I don't, anyway, there's, anyway, it's a glitch in the matrix here. But yeah, 1,495 Z4s made, which right. this shares the platform with the Toyota Supra, which is so weird. Um, that, yeah, let's make the Supra again, but let's right. just platform share with BMW. Uh, I mean, the Supra has this like mystique and the uh, obsession and the mm -hmm. hardcore group that follows it. So I get why they kind of want to try to recreate it like, more luxurious. Right. Well, the Z4 has been around for a while again. Mm -hmm. I still have a Z8. It right. is an amazing car. Mm -hmm. This, well, we'll see. I can't imagine that they would discontinue the Z cars entirely, but I guess they could. Are they getting those Grenadiers on this list? Why would they put Grenadier? I feel like they're new. Like, give them a chance to develop. And well, they've been for on. sale since last year yeah. as far as bringing things to the U.S. That's new, right? 900 Grenadiers okay. sold in the U.S. so far. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be tough. I don't know how much they're going to be able to cut in as far as a you know, limited market, limited dealership network, as mm -hmm. far as them picking and choosing just big markets and Felix is licking one of his kittens a little too hard. Her hey, kittens. Wh how is this <laughs> such a weird concept for you that Neelix is a female cat? <laughs> right. Anyway. Okay. I'm just worried about you. Like, how did you make it this far I, I in life? I, <laughs> like, you went to college, too. I know, you have a degree. I know, I know. In and political then, science. I, I, I know. So and you I, and I watched president. the debate with Biden, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I, I know what's happening to him. I do this for a living. Like, I, my pronouns are always mixed up. But, anyway, the Ineos Grenadier is very macho. It is very, very macho. Very macho, uh, but only 900 sold. And that's, I mean, it's going to be a very limited market for these because, yeah, it does offer that very macho, very old school SUV, right. but it offers that old school ride feel. Like, you give up a lot to buy one of these, and it is very expensive. Right. So, well, and out of we'll all see. the cars on here, I feel like they did a good job of getting the word out there because they don't have the legacy of the name for mm -hmm. decades and... I feel like everybody knows Grenadier. And a Grenadier, yes, absolutely. Sorry, BMW Grenadier. powered Mercedes mm -hmm. factory that they took over to build these things. Mm -hmm. It's well done. We'll see long term. It's too early to make a judgment on Halloween. And I don't do cats, so I'm just so allergic to like holding the cats. Really? My nose, like my nose is going <laughs> crazy. And it's giving me cold symptoms, which is why I can't, like I'm having trouble speaking, right? Oh, it's a cat. Isn't that, isn't that what it does? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're going political here. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Next on the list, Audi A8. Once yeah. again, I said big cars, big coupes. Right. People aren't buying anymore. 854 A8 sold so far in 2024. Unimaginable. Everybody's buying Q5, 6, 7, right. 8. They're not buying the big sedans, even though, you know, Jason Statham, the Transporter. Transporter oh. 2 oh. and all the rest of the Transporter movies, oh. like he's in an A8. Yeah. yeah. So are, do you think this is the end of the line for the A8? <sighs> That'd be insane. That'd they're be insane. not selling. They're not moving them. What are they going to sit there's on them? There's no way because the, as far as the luxury class, as far as this is in the U.S., mm -hmm. I imagine that there's still demand for these in in Europe and Russia. Yeah. You know, I guess big luxury cars mm -hmm. are still a thing out there to right. get around. Like they can't get rid of the flagship. They'll dump the A7, the A6, mm -hmm. you, know, or where, you know, whatever. They'll they'll have two sedans. They'll they'll dump the small one or the middle one. I feel like before they went with the flagship or got rid of it, that'd be right. That'd be admitting dismal failure. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would not be good. So, eight hundred and fifty four A eights, and the number that's got to get lower because it's the S and the V ninety. So once again, the big flagship from Volvo, eight hundred and eight. That sounds like a lot. Does it? Yeah. 808 sold so far this year. I would think that'd be way worse from Volvo, but they can actually move their giant, expensive luxury sedans. That's a cool looking car. I can see why it moves. Right? Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of tech with them. There's plug in hybrids of them now. They're trying really hard, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, uh, 808 for Volvo may be pretty good. I don't know. Uh, the Audi A7 is on okay. here as well. And once again, like a, it's, they're cannibalizing themselves by having so many. Right. And the A7 is just, you know, the swoopy, coopy back version yeah. of, 
an A8 or an A06. I, which one do I, you I like really better? Like, which one are you going for? The oh, 8 or the I'd 7? I'd go for the 8. Yeah. For sure. But I, like, I'd want the A8 with the W12, the old Bentley W12, <laughs> or the A8 with the Lamborghini V10 in it. That's the last ones that stick in my head. I'm like, wow, that is so right. cool. After that, you know, it's been twin turbo V8s that I'm sure are way more powerful and way more efficient and all that stuff. But it just, it doesn't, it doesn't grab you. It's mm -hmm. just not like, wow, that's, yeah. So I've quit paying attention to Audis. Uh, I don't know about you. But oh, that's so you, sad. That's, you never paid attention Maybe to that's Audis. why they're on the list. Did a guy pulled up in an Audi and said, <laughs> what's up? So bad. I, I don't want to say I associate it with a female car because it's not fair to just kind of box everyone in, but they're a little, they skew a little like a girl car. Can I say that? No, no, no okay. you just you just lost half our subscribers. Anyway, uh, next, <laughs> the Genesis G90. Yes. Uh, we reviewed one of those. We right. really liked it. Very expensive, fully loaded, can be over $100,000 on a Korean flagship. Whoa. They're very expensive. Which is already, you know, a dying, very limited market. Right. Um, as cool as it is, as amazing the tech is, as amazing as the massagers are. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Oh, they've sold 697 yeah. so far in 2024. Probably because they watched your video on the massage chairs and they're like, ooh, no. <laughs> was, was, I don't was, want this, that. was this one Hoobie reviewed? It looks like it. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're cool cars. I appreciate mm -hmm. that they went on a ledge, started a new kind of offshoot of Hyundai. And Luxury. It's a, yeah, it's There's a, a demand for these in Korea. They'll keep building mm -hmm. them for their home base, their home turf. Right. And bring them to the U.S. to be like, look how cool we are. We're building a flagship that rivals Mercedes and BMW. So just for that reason, they have to keep building them to show that we are a luxury competitor. That's what you so. said, little Korean fingers massaging you in the seats, which may have, you know, turned off some buyers. I don't know. It's maybe a little creepy. Mm. Next, <laughs> Acura ZDX. Mm -hmm. So there's an all new electric one. Uh, the ZDX came out a decade prior and it was in the first Thor movie. And that's where we, first, I think we all saw them in the very beginning. And I was like, what's this weird kind of koopy <laughs> SUV? And it was weird and nobody bought them. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of quit after a couple of years. But they brought back the name ZDX. Mm -hmm. And it's not really in that same style because it doesn't have that super koopy rear, but it's an electric uh, version of, once again, a right. Model Y competitor. Right. It's just coming. So they've sold 338 of them so far this year. I don't think it's going to be a very big seller. Right. But once again, too soon to tell. But is our government pushing these companies to push out electric cars? And so they're just, they're putting them out there because they have to. And they get kickbacks from the government to get them out there. But they're not really putting a lot of thought and effort into making them. They're like, oh, we need to be on target with, you know, what, 20... 35 to get all the electric cars out there. Right, there's that mandate to do that. And I think automakers were sort of responding to it like, well, let's start tipping our toes in it to see if this is viable. Mm -hmm. And so they all developed and went into a lot of engineering money right. into uh, creating this new EV lines, their own platforms and things. And then they're realizing that the demand's just not there yet. And uh, yeah, pushing back on the government, which I think mm -hmm. will sort of relax it a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll see on the ZDX, but very weird to see that name come back. And then this one is predictable, the Toyota Mirai Hydrogen. Hmm, what? Yes, only 245 of them. How do you buy hydrogen to refuel it? Once again, that's a very limited thing where you have to be in a so place cool. where it has hydrogen, <laughs> refuel, which I, might be only in California, I don't know. Probably in California. But 245 of those sold. But I remember meeting the like president of SEMA, I think, I, I forget what his name was, mm -hmm. but he's talking about how hydrogen is the next best fuel that we're going to have and make, but I don't know what it is, but it's my understanding that it, is, it almost costs more to create hydrogen because you have to remove the water molecules in a certain way. And it's more expensive and it takes more energy to create hydrogen to then put in your car than it's worth. I feel old. I have no idea. <laughs> You're not. I don't, I don't know. It, somehow, yeah, part of water makes a car go bang. Right, exactly. Well, the Hindenburg, the Hindenburg was full of hydrogen and it exploded. So they switched to helium. So there you go. There's what, there you go. There, <laughs> there, back in the 30s, the Hindenburg exploded. <laughs> I remember looking at yeah, my window and seeing it. 
I never thought I would get old, and then look what's happening. You just have a few gray whiskers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I count them all the time. Next on the list, the Fiat 500E, once again, uh -oh. just came back into the U.S. Mm -hmm. Electric Fiat 500. Um, and it's $32,000, which is cheap for an electric That's car. That's great. Uh, limited range, though, very teeny tiny. What's the range, do um, you know? I, uh, Three I miles. No, no. <laughs> it, I mean, I don't think it's much over 200. Right. And they've only sold 203 so far. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. That's the range anxiety. But for a city car, and that's still pretty expensive, $32,500. Mm -hmm. um, EV tax credit wise, that may help it quite a bit, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if they qualify. Once again, that's a very confusing thing in the government uh, helping uh, spur sales of EVs by mm -hmm. offering a tax credit on some of them. To, but now they have to meet certain requirements of being built in a certain way, like in the US. So, so maybe not. This train of thought's really good and bad. Yeah. Show. <laughs> oh no. What's, uh, what's, <laughs> no. What, do I need, what do I need to end this one on? What did he, what did he say? Um, oh. I didn't say it. I thought it. But I didn't say anything. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna beat Medicare. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I'm not doing very well. We just came back yes, from vacation. Are. So, what yeah, the, vacation? the Nissan GTR yeah. yes. has a 15 year run. Very, very long in the tube. Right. They've refreshed it once, but it it's on its way out. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the line. If you want one, you get it now. Uh, but so far this year, the GTR. Only 150 sold. What? Okay, so they're toast. They're they're done. Yeah, but I feel like this is going to be like a a lot of the the cars of the 90s, where towards the end they weren't like like the uh, Acura NSX. Mm -hmm. After the late 90s, nobody was buying them. Right. And then the most desirable ones for from those last couple of years, where they only sold a few hundred. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely the end of an era when it comes to, you know, just brute power like right. you know a true sports car without any electric helping as far as the hybrid and all that stuff and, and just being an icon for tuners and right. everybody alike so. so is this the one out of the list that you godzilla. want godzilla i want your... godzilla for sure Garage. yes yeah mm -hmm. but it's not the worst the hyundai nexo is the worst which is another hydrogen vehicle hydrogen we're in the future i didn't even know it existed uh, apparently it's being sold in the United States to somebody. 77 people have bought it. Cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, they're very innovative. I like the idea of it. And I hope that that works out because that would be fantastic have, to clean fuel, right? I have no idea how it works. <laughs> it's magic. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to go have a cognitive test. <laughs> no, I think it's the pet dander. Like the like six of them. Like I'm not a cat person. They're just so itchy. You do have a lot of cat hair on you. I'm sorry. It's, you know, I don't know.